Welcome to the Larry Kreider's Leadership Podcast. Larry is the author of over 40 books, the founder of Dove International, a worldwide family of churches and ministries in six continents, and has over 50 years of leadership experience. He and his guests will share inspirational leadership insights from their journey with God. These insights, gleaned from serving leaders in many nations, will transform your life and leadership. For more information on Larry's books and resources, visit LarryKreider.com. Welcome to the Larry Kreider Leadership Podcast. Larry Kreider here. With me in the studio today is my long-term friend, David Yarn from Fort Mill, South Ooh. Carolina. Wow. Welcome, Dave. It's great to be here. Yeah. It, we've been together for a long time, Larry. A and, lot of uh, parts of the world, too, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So good to be here. Yeah. It feels great. Uh, it feels great to have you here. I remember being in Uganda with you one time, yep. Kenya with you. Peru. Peru with you. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Pennsylvania. <laughs> All these nations, right? The, the nation of New York. York. We were there for a little bit. We were. We sure Canada together. Yep, yeah, yep. we were. We were. And obviously, you know, you've been giving leadership to Kingdom Business Association. Yes. Uh, you've worked with Rick Joyner for many years and uh, serving as vice president, executive vice president of Morningstar Ministries. That's right. And I think you've told me one time that you, you've you run about 15 businesses. And That's so, correct. So you learned yeah, a, a yeah. lot of stuff. We want to drill down and talk about what you've learned about leadership. You're an author, Ignite Your Passion, Chart Your Course, Own Your Life, Three Circle Strategy, uh, David Yarns, put out by Destiny Image, and also the Three Circle Strategy. I love this little book. This thing's amazing. The Three Circle Strategy for a Fulfilling Life. We're going to talk about yeah. those things, too. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about you, you and Gina and your family. Yep. You guys are in, in South Carolina now. You grew up in New York, right? Grew up in New York, and we love South Carolina. We're just outside of Charlotte on the old PTL campus. Now, oh, I don't know if right. listeners will remember that, but oh, yeah. we're literally, our house is part of what wow. PTL used to be. and. Wow. We have uh, somewhere around 800,000 square feet of redeemed PTL <laughs> property. So, yeah, it's so cool to be down there. And, uh, you know, been cool. with Rick for over a decade sure. in building and restoring. Exactly. Uh, let's talk about New York and how you grew up. Just talk a little bit about your background. Well, you know, that's interesting. You know, I grew up in Buffalo, New York, which is the mecca of blue-collar workers. Yeah. I mean, you've got steel workers, sure. you've got Chevy workers, mm -hmm. you've got dock workers. So, and, uh, you know, kind of the mantra is, you know, God and country, you know, right, don't right. talk bad about my wife and, you know, <laughs> want to drink a beer and watch hockey on the right. weekends. That's that's it. So, but, uh, you know, grew up in a blue-collar family. You know, mom and dad loved us and, you know, yeah. But uh, paycheck to paycheck kind of stuff, right, I, would, I right. would say. And then uh, early on, I always started to feel like, okay, you know, what more is there? I always yeah. had that entrepreneurial mindset. But first of all, I had to get my life squared away with Jesus. Talk about that. How'd that happen? Yeah, interesting. You know, I uh, we grew up Catholic, you know, right. kind of. Like always, everybody else yeah. in that part of the world, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's either. Uh, and, you know, I would say that. Uh, Polish Catholic. My heritage is Polish. They're pretty devout people, but sure. it's just, you know, I, I've got some wonderful Catholic friends, and I think they're doing amazing things, and I wouldn't say anything against the people, sure. but the church, I couldn't understand it, and mm -hmm. it just didn't resonate with me. You know, I didn't understand the Mass. And then in a bar of all places— wow. A guy from Jesus People USA. Do you remember that? The I Glenn do. Kaiser's place from yeah. Chicago. Yeah. He was witnessing in a bar. And I was there and just started to hear the gospel. He goes, Do you want me to pray for you? And that so helped me. I thought in my mind, and this will help other people because sometimes we got to be clear. When he said, I'll pray for you, I thought he was going to go home that night. Oh. And kneel by his bed, and honestly, and say, "Now I lay me down." This is, <laughs> I, that's the only prayer I knew. And uh, I said, "Yeah, I'd like you to pray for me." And in the middle of that, he reaches yeah. over his hand, starts praying for me, and I was, you know, received the Lord there. Wow. Yeah. And so, I mean, how did your parents respond to all this, and what changed in your life you, after that? I think it was, you know, a lot of it was uh, skepticism. You know, is mm -hmm. this going to last? Right. And then. Um, I mean, early on, I, I kind of poked fun at the Catholic Church, and that really drove a wedge between me and my family uh -huh. with religion, because I didn't know any better. You sure, know, just, of course. And it was back in the day when I think people were thinking that 
Catholics and Mary and all that stuff. They right, were, right. Had a vendetta. So it, it alienated me a little bit from them. But after they saw me pastoring and, you know, really continuing, I had a chance to, uh, you know, really witness and lead my mom and dad to the Lord. So Beautiful. that was cool. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, in this podcast, obviously, we focus on leadership. Yeah. And what are some things? Uh, we've got people from, you know, 160 plus nations who connect with us. Welcome. There. Welcome. And so, you know, what are some leadership things you've learned over the years that would help them? Mm-hmm. And so didn't you work for the government for a while? Yeah. Yeah. It was right? my first big break. I was an analyst for New York State. Wow. So I, I this is when the free trade agreement was first coming out and they wanted to see the effects of the free trade agreement, you know, the largest trading partners in the world at the time were Canada and United States, yeah. and that border on New York, and all the businesses that were in New York at the time were, were massive. So uh, I was a small part of the New York Economic Development Department mm-hmm. that studied that. So, but the byproduct was I sat with you know a hundred plus CEOs a wow. year. Just asking them how their business was going, seeing what we could do to help, kind of analyzing trends. And I didn't realize it at the time, but that was God's training. Yeah. Being around those leaders and hearing them talk and being in and out of boardrooms. And, you know, as a young guy, I was in my 20s. Yeah. That was the thing that prepared me later on. That's what's so amazing about God. Whatever we're going through, whatever phase of life we're in, God will take those things we're learning yeah. and use them. You know, all things work together for good to those who love God, the Bible says, and use those things to prepare us for our future. Now, in those days, did you think you'd be in business with all these companies? Think you'd ever end up being a pastor? I mean, you know, you've done all these things, David. No, no. I mean, honestly, it, I thought, you know, because it was a pretty good gig with the government sure. as a young guy and as a civil servant. There's pension involved, and there's you know, you, right. You, I could probably sleep at my desk for a year, and no one would care. You know, I mean, I shouldn't say that. I'm sure there's some great government workers, but it was a secure job. I was in the newspaper a lot, so it was a great job. But one day, the Lord confronted me with the parable of the talents. Oh, and the man that hid his talent. Wow, went and dug it up. I mean, it blasted me, and I really felt like I'm. I, I, there's something more. And so I remember talking with my friends and my coworkers and my family, and they said, you're crazy mm-hmm. to leave this kind of a job to go off into business. And I didn't even know exactly what I was going to do, you know, so I just started some things from there. But it was a real clear call. I mean, it was a real serious time of like, no, sure. you know, you can stay here, but you'll, you'll miss your calling. So what are some of the different kinds of businesses that God led you into, something you've done over the years? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, so I uh, worked and developed a pharmacy. That was really new for me. Wow. Uh, I worked and developed a bank. This mm-hmm. is a national bank. And um, put that together. I bought a theater, bought a lot of real estate. Well, I mean, for me, it was a lot. You know, sure. owned, built, and operated you know, with with some others, an award-winning hotel, you know, Burger King developed things like wow. that, and uh, and you know, people look back and they're like, well, is there a common thread? There really it wasn't. It was more opportunities that would sure. present himself. You know, so God opened doors before you, and yeah. you walked through. Yeah, and we figured it out. You know, like the pharmacy business, none of us had ever been in it, but we had an opportunity, and we figured it out and just kind of made things work and. Wow. Um, and, you know, let me just say, you know, not everyone just started small and went on to sure, start. Sure, sure, you know, of course. Of, yeah. of course. Now, you were a pastor for a while, too. I remember those days well. How did that happen? Yeah, so so I think, you know, this was, and you were so helpful, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, when we get to heaven, you'll see Larry Kreider's effect on me and the people that I impact. It's It's true. It was coming to grips with that calling of really wanting to serve God with all my heart. Right. I mean, I, I think, right. you know, that that sense of separation and then trying to figure out, you know, I, I really like doing business, but I want to pastor people. So sure. I started, uh, I met Larry Kreider, uh, that's my story, and I, I'm i sticking to it, and I started a home group in my house, and that grew from 10, two home groups, three, you know, the next thing you know, we've got a big church, and, you know, we're... Uh, Moving, but it started with a real heart for down and outers, the, yeah. the least and the yeah. lost. And meanwhile, I was 
pastoring full time and working in business full time mm -hmm. and uh, watching both of those grow, it was an exciting time. And I think God multiplied time. He multiplied grace. Our family was young. I mean, if, if you ask me how I did it now, it, it'd be right. hard to put the pieces together. Right, right. So in the midst of this whole process, I remember you were in Jamestown, New York, That's right? right, yeah. And I remember seeing you in those early days when you were passing this new church, all these new people coming to Christ and uh, helping disciple them at the same time, running these businesses, et cetera, et cetera. And then, but eventually you ended up in Fort Mill, South Carolina. Yes. How did that happen? That's a, that's a, a really great story. I, I had won an award uh, for hotel management, and they do a big... Uh, all the hotels come together once a year, and this time it happened to be in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And when you win an award as a quality excellence hotel, you actually stand up on stage. There's thousands of people. It's really sure. cool. And I remember carrying the award back like on my carry-on. Right. You know what I mean? Because it was like yeah, a little sure. plaque kind of award right. type of a thing. I was really proud of it. And I met a mutual friend here in PA, and he said, I'm going to have lunch with a guy named Rick Joyner. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, I'm like, where do I know that name from? And I remember somebody in my church had been reading his book and gave it to me. I go, right. yeah, I'd love to meet him. So when I met Rick, I had this award with me. And he goes, what's that? And I go, I won an award for hotel management. Or you know, I was telling him about right. it. And he said, I have a hotel. And now when I'm around prophetic people, I'm uh, forgive me, Jesus, but I get skeptical. Like, yeah. you know, can anybody else see the hotel? Is it in the spirit? Is it, you know, is it an actual, is it an actual physical right. thing? And I go, how many rooms do you have? And he said, I've got about 500. And that is a BMX. That's, That's a giant. Yeah. So I said, I've got to see this. And from that point, uh -huh. I would spend buy my own airline tickets, take my staff down. But once I saw the restoration project, I mean, I, I probably went down there for a year before I was ever on staff just trying to help sure. get this thing off the ground. And that's the way it was, just a chance meeting. And so now you've been, how many years have you been in that part of the world? Yeah, I've been there probably 13 years or more. Wow, yeah. maybe more. And But it's just so interesting to me how the God had lined up all these situations for you. Wow. You know, and got you the place where he called you and led you and your wife, Gina, and your, your family there to serve there. And we have done so amazingly. But let's talk, talk to me more about that. Oh, no, I, I was just thinking that, like you said, you know, when you look back, you can see the training yes. took place and then the application for it. Correct. But sometimes when you're going through it, it's, it's hard to put the pieces together. Yeah. Are the things you wish you would have known, <laughs> looking back now, are there some things you wish you would have known back then that you know now? My God, yeah. Yeah, my <laughs> God, for sure. You know, I think that uh, there's a whole category of things that I would say that, that have to do with, with mindset. Honestly, and I'm not sure if this is true for everybody, but a philosopher once said, we suffer more in our minds than we do in our lives. You know, just just having the right kind of mindset, because I think as you're taking on big projects, the stress, the responsibility, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I've had a, a hundred plus employees for the last 30 years, yeah. you know, 25 yeah. years, right. and you're responsible for them. These are yeah. families, and right. people you know and love. And, right. um, and, the, and if you're not careful, I think the biggest attack can come in your mind and, you know, attack your identity and... Uh, I, I didn't, you know, it takes a while to get through that. And I think the other subset is, you know, your own insecurities and pushing right. through those. Because I think God is able to use you to do the task. It's just you getting your mind right around it. Yeah, that yeah. Makes, makes a lot of sense. So looking back now, all these years in, in leadership, I mean, are, do you have preferences? Think, you know, I really love business. Yeah. Or do you say, no, I really love, you know, the whole prophetic side of life, or I really love pastoring, or you say, I love everything I do. You love the whole deal. Yeah, I, I would say my preference is towards the organizational okay. leadership, putting the team together, all of the key performance indicators, the mm -hmm. financing behind it, and then watching it come from zero and build. 
And I think there's a certain type of leadership around that. Um, I think it's there's creative leadership, but then there's a type of leadership. You have to be more process focused. You have to be more yeah. methodic. Yeah. And I don't think I, I I grew up with that. It was something that I had to learn, you know, from uh, executive view of financial statements to executive view of leadership and HR and understanding those departments and planning um, instead of just kind of flying by the seat of your pants, you know, just kind of thinking through and then monitoring and maintaining. That's such an important yeah. part of leadership. Checking in, checking to see how your key performance indicators are working. That, that took a while for me. But I think early on, you know, especially there were a few projects where all of my money was invested. Right. If right. this didn't work, Larry, I mean, there's, no, there's no plan B. <laughs> and so you, you do everything you can. You know, I'm, I'm talking with the bank. I'm, I'm reading the financial statements. I'm planning the marketing. You're doing everything you can because there's, there's no turning back. And I think, you know, you start small. You kind of, David slew the lion, the bear, then Goliath. I think you start small. Some of the, right. some of the projects. Good. And good. I think people listening to, this is important. You know, you, you might not have a lot of zeros at the end of your project mm -hmm. or... You might think it's small, but it requires the same kind of sophisticated leadership and planning that multi, multi-million dollar projects take. Mm -hmm. There's more facets, there's more people, right. but the organization side, the leadership side, and uh, that's, that's the same, isn't it? It really is. Let's talk about the balance of, you know, especially in ministries and businesses, you've got people who are extremely spiritual, very prophetic, you get the word of the Lord, hey, we're going to move ahead with this. Yeah. And then you got other people carrying the gift of administration. Yeah. And how do those two work together? Because you live in various worlds where those two have to work together. How does that work? Yeah, I think I think there has to be a very significant mutual respect. Okay, that's good. A very significant, you know, this is my lane, my gifting. Okay. And you know, I can give you my opinion. Right. So for you as an author, I mean, you, you incredible author, I can tell you, you know, my opinion on some things, but you have subject matter expertise in that arena. Right. And I think that's the way uh, that's large, good. multifaceted leadership ministries mm. have to work. And fortunately, I've been able to work with a group of people that recognize the fiscal and logistics side has expertise to it. And this isn't just something that you can, how do I want to say, you can pray about it, but mm -hmm. You have to learn this stuff. It'd be, right. it'd be like, hey, you know, you, you have a friend and he has a heart disease. And I go, Larry, I watched a YouTube video on it. I've right, really right. been praying right, about it. Right. I love Jesus. I must speak in tongues the yeah, whole time. Right. You'd never let me operate. Right. Because I lack the skill and I lack the time in that position to Correct. gain trust, to gain competency. Yeah. Or flying an airplane. Yes. You want an airplane pilot who really has been trained properly. <laughs> yes. I don't care how spiritual they are. They need yeah. to be spiritual, but it's really learning the nuts and bolts and how to fly an airplane. And I would say this is this if you would say a personal frustration, um, I, you know, a couple of my great friend uh, says this. He says, uh, pastors talking to you about business are like eunuchs talking to you about marriage. <laughs> and now, that's been a personal frustration because I get it. These are spiritual leaders. Yeah. But if they haven't run a business, right. and uh, the reverse is true. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen mm -hmm. business leaders that try to come in and bully pastors and try to run right, them like right. a business. And it's not. It's a, it's right. a different deal. So I think exactly. God, the scriptures, God so composed the body right. that we have individual lanes and we right. have abundant necessity of each other. And mutual respect is the key. Mutual that respect. That is so, yeah. so, so good. So talk to me about team building. You've built tons of teams. What are some keys in building teams that you found? Well, I, you know, I, I'll tell you the, the mistake I made early on, especially in the hotel business, because I wanted to be an excellent hotel. I, I know everybody says that, but a lot of people don't aim for that. They just want to sure. make money or something. Yeah. I really want to do things excellent. I want to win some awards. And you can't do it without the right team. I don't care how right. many hours you That's put right. in. Sooner or later, you're going to go home. Yeah. 
And then if you don't have the right energetic team with your vision, they will mess You're up right. and guests won't like it. And it's a very yep. feeling oriented. So as I was doing that, I realized I had put a bunch of people that I knew that were honest Christian people that lacked skill set mm. and almost got to the point where I'm like, give me some solid heathens here that know this, <laughs> that know the job. Does that right. make sense? Sure and, it does. And I, looking back, it, it seems obvious, but at the time I thought, well, these people love the Lord, and but they just were terrible at that job mm-hmm. and because they weren't trained in it. They, they had other skill sets. And then I had I had to realize, you know, God has given us our own abilities, our own gifting, but then it's up to me to develop skill. Mm-hmm. It's up for me to put the hours in. Mm-hmm. And without that, um, you know, I mean, I appreciate the the prayer and the character, but there's two sides. There's there's character, and then there's competence. Right. And competence is you know proven applied exactly, knowledge. Exactly. Yeah, I've been a blessed man over the years because I've had great teams. And people on teams that I've led, much more grace in a lot of areas than I was. Yes. And if we can resource our weaknesses with those who do that much better than we can, it makes all the difference in building powerful, strong, strong teams for the future. I, I think I think another side that I, I think absolutely right, I think another side of team building that I've seen is you need to react quickly if you've got the wrong person in play. Okay. I mean, because sometimes you can do the research, you can, you can, you can put the person in there, and they start to go. Now it's not that they're evil or no, wrong, no, no. or just if you see that uh, it's not. I mean, first of all, you want to teach them and coach them and try to really work with them. But at the point where you see it's not going to work out, I see people wait way too long, mm. way too long to make a decision to remove them. And the aftermath of what happens in that time can be devastating. Mm-hmm. They brought bad habits in there. Mm-hmm. The, the group starts to get demoralized. And, you know, uh, and nobody, I don't think people really relish that confrontation. But right. I, try to, I try to do that. If, if I see it's the wrong person and, you know, it's come to that point where I've told them and they realize what's going on, you, you have to be decisive. I think that's a solid characteristic of being a team leader. Be decisive. Be decisive. Okay. And you, you need to make the right decisions at the right time mm-hmm. and make those decisions, of course. I mean, obviously, with often there's others who help you with yeah. that, you know, safety and multitude of counselors, as yes. Scripture says, uh, but making wise decisions quickly. Now, you're also an author. And uh, DaveYarns.com, people can pick up a lot of stuff you've done, get books on Amazon. Uh, just, I, I'm going to have you back. We want to talk about the three-circle strategy. I want to really, Love really, it. really dig into that game changer for me. Yeah. yeah. And just talk a little bit about your books. Uh, and we're, we're almost out of time already. It's gone so fast. But talk a little bit about your books and uh, why should people buy these books? Well, I, th- I, th- I think they're experientially based, and they were game changers oh, for good. me. Oh, good, good. What's written in there? are the things that I would have told a younger Dave Yarn. So the things that I wish I would have known. Yeah, that's great. Ignite Your Passion, Chart Your Course, Own Your Life by David Yarns, and Three Circle Strategy for Fulfilling Life by Dave Yarns. Again, we'll have you back and talk more about that. Anything more you want to say yet at the close of this podcast for younger leaders looking at the future, saying what are some things that I should be aware of, some things you might wish you would have done differently that you could pass on to them as we close this podcast? Yeah, I mean, faith is spelled R-I-S-K. You, you know, go. You mean, you've got to get out there. You've, you know, and, and then I, I think... You know, I think you've got to press past any of your internal dialogue mm-hmm. that's holding you back because we need you, young leaders. Yeah. Listen, yeah. The, the best thing you can do for the body of Christ and the world at large is to lead your family, lead yes. your organization, yeah. be a leader, um, and model the, the attributes of Christ. Mm. Good leadership is not coercive. It's, right. not, it's not dictatorial. Good leadership is biblically based leadership yeah. time and time again. Yeah. It's more profitable. It's more sustainable. It is. 
David, one last thing I want to ask you. KBA, Kingdom Business Association, you lead that. You've led that from the beginning. Yes. Talk to us about what is that? How can somebody get involved in that if they feel called to it? Kingdom Business Association is a group of like-minded entrepreneurs, business associates from Wall Street to Main Street to Hollywood. And we're focused on seeing the prophetic released in our business. Mm. Um, there's a lot of cool attributes about success, but if you were to ask me the things that changed my life, they were prophetic words. Right, me too. How do you cultivate that? How do you, how do you be involved in a community? So people from all over the world come together and they join the Kingdom Business Association to find training, equipping, great articles, but most importantly, they find the release of that kind of uh, anticipation of the prophetic and relationship with other people that are like-minded. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, you check out the show notes. Uh, we've got Dave's books on here. We've got Kingdom Business Association, Dave Young. KBABiz.com. There you go, KBABiz.com, and that's all in the show notes. And uh, we're going to have you back, Dave. We really want to talk about the three-circle strategy for a fulfilling life. And I know that's been a life message for you. Yes. And I just want you to unpack that in a, in a, in a future podcast. So, Dave Yarns, thank you, man. Thank you for joining great, me today. This has been so much be fun. honor. Appreciate so much the way God's used you. You've helped us tremendously over the years. You've come here at your own expense. You've helped us even behind the scenes with a lot of our administration, a lot of our business side. We're eternally grateful for you Happy and for Gina help. and your I family. What a great blessing. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today for the Larry Credit Leadership Podcast, where we learn these small changes we can make in our lives that will make a massive difference if we apply them, not only in difference in our lives, but a difference in the lives of those that we serve and those that they serve. Uh, because There's a chain reaction that happens here as we learn to be the godly leaders that God's called us to be. So God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you back here next week. Have a blessed week in the Lord. Thank you for listening to Larry Kreider's Leadership Podcast. If you want more information about any of Larry's books, daily devotionals, small group resources, or any other teachings, go to LarryKreider.com.